Thank you so much for staying with us. It is still iBrand Daybreak. Uh, that video you just saw actually is very star studded. Uh, but of course, uh, the major focus for us this morning is our own Mayowa Ibidapo Amand. Hi, Mayowa. Good morning. Very fine. It's been long they called me that name. Anyone who calls me Mayowa mm. must either be a family member or a very Oh, you friend. did not know? They didn't tell you? No, they and your third them. cousin from your father's side? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, by the way, you're welcome uh, you to much. the show. I, I have so much written out here about you, but I'd like to hear about you from you. Tell us a bit about Punchline. Uh, uh, Punchline, my Ibidak uh, Bahamont. Like you said, you're from my family, so you should know. <laughs> uh, I'm a graduate of the Federal University of Culture, Belkuta. I started making music while I was in school. So this must have been around uh, 2010, 11. Oh. And we've been rapping. So when we finished school, I got encouraged to take it serious. So Instagram, freestyling and everything. Um, I think I did that for a couple of months. Then I did um, a cover of One Hit mm -hmm. by Kobam Sasuko, which he really liked. Then he called me. Then we did like an official remix of the song, which I did a video for. Then since then, it's been one big feature, one um, show, and everything after the other. Mm, so which, which punchline did you drop that made you take up that name punchline? It was in school, you know, while... Um, I didn't really have a name. I think I went by a lot of names. I can't even remember mm. uh, before then. But one day, one guy said, Ah, but when you man drop punchline, go man drop punchline, go. And it stuck. So mm. started calling me punchline. So I had to add my surname to it, um, punchline Armand, just so it doesn't get lost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, punchline, let me use that word. Thanks. And um, you've got some quite um, reasonable following. And um, what has been that? Thing that has stuck your fans to you i think it's me staying true to my craft i think over the years that i've been in the industry different styles come in right now it's on my piano uh. um there was the zanku time there was the shaku shaku time but i stay true to my storytelling if you listen to all my songs uh, even if I'm doing different things on different beats, there's still you still know. Oh, that's punchline. It tells stories. So I talk about exactly real things. That? What exactly is that? So that your viewers who are watching you now can look up to it. Okay, storytelling. I, I rap and you see yourself in my music. Oh, this must have happened to me before. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I can relate to this. So it's the relatability in my song. So I think I a lot of my friends say I do reality music. So I put it that way. Mm. So is it centered around money? Is it centered around love? That's what I'm saying. Okay centered around um um happenings in the society presently so social i talk about issues. yeah social issues so i talk wow. about um i have a song titled the fabiao boy mm. where where i think that's like the biggest now uh, where we talk about a cyber crime talked about what i would be if i was doing yeah but if you listen to the end of the song you know i'm actually advising against it so i'm talking about social issues talking about things happening basically to oh. young sorry, Nigerians. sorry let me go into your private life a little okay. bit Mm. You have. Um, I don't have a girlfriend. No, no, I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going into a relationship. I said let me go to your private life. Okay. So I'm looking at. <laughs> All right, I want to play that part. So, okay, fine. It's <laughs> good. It's it given. I'm looking at your close circles. Okay. When I say let me go into your private life, I'm looking at your close circles. Mm. Do you have mm. any friend of yours or mm. friends of yours mm. who went to Yahoo? Yes, yeah, this is what you know. Huh? <laughs> Because for you to say that mm. you made that song, that kind of title, if I be Yahoo, but yeah. mm. what would have influenced that decision? I necessarily do not have um, to have friends. Um, if you if you go online, uh, I think I wrote that song in 2019. I didn't release it until lately, but I wrote okay. it in 2019 where we had the uh, Invictus issue. Oh, okay. uh, because a line in the song was, uh, what's in that one? They carry my face, they find for Forbes. Mm. If I be a old boy, like it, it went like, um, I'm not going to find attention. Uh, common city people, you know, go see me on top. What's now on they carry my face, they find for Forbes. What's now on they carry my head, go find for TV. I'm not going to start label, leave me now. Look, cut I go the barb every time, believe me. So, they go call me bad market when they see me. Uh, we've not gotten to the <laughs> point where you give us a freestyle, uh, but uh, let me like ask that, you anyway. this question. Like yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm telling you to hold it because very soon <laughs> you'll get the opportunity to unleash. Right. However, uh, I think mm -hmm. it was in 2002 you were named among the top three boom play rappers, mm. uh, in the prestigious past the mic competition. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a bit about okay, that? Okay, that, that was the very that 
that was a very wonderful experience for me. I think um, we got invited about 20 of us. So the, we, we had people who voted. So I made top five. Mm. Then uh, from the top five, we made top two. Mm. I think it was me. I met a couple of very, very wonderful guys. Preacher Kings, I shared one first time burning Jews. And because of that, I have a song with M.I. Through that relationship, we have a song with M.I. now. So it was a very, very stressful experience, I remember. <laughs> because we had to do a lot of tasks in mm. that five days we were there. But I liked that I was able to test myself and see my strengths. <clears throat> All right, because we're pressed with time, let me also ask you this. Uh, Nigeria is mm. the face of Afrobeat music. Right now. Uh, we carry it on our head like it's gala. Yeah. Good. And we, we're very good at it, actually. But we do not see a lot of... Uh, there was a time when it looked like we'd be directing in the direction... Uh, it would be driving in the re direction of rap. That was when we had the Vector, them, the MIs. Um, the they were like the, the thing happening in the music industry at the time. But that, over a period of time, it's more like the... It, I don't want to say phase the way because they're still out there making great yeah, music making, that we enjoy yeah. but we have more of these young people who are putting out the afro beats mixing it up with everything else but still making great music and then one of their daddies came out one time and said that rappers in nigeria are joke are jokers do you understand and you know the at the place at which rap music is right now in nigeria how do you react to that statement and do you think that rappers get you know the accolades that they deserve in the country i think at that point that statement was really needed because mm. a lot of people were losing their direction true and people were getting distracted because of the buzz afrobeat was getting mm. and they were singing so i think it was mi abaga's song and i think that drove a lot of people to get back to make rap music but what i think we should do as rappers is to stick to our stories. We can't do it the same way Americans are doing it. Mm. If you are going to be the new Whiskey, for example, you are definitely always going to be under Whiskey. So we have to tell our own stories, use our own beats, do it in our own way, so the world will see, okay, this is how Nigerian rap is. Mm. Because in Ghana, I think the world recognizes Ghanaian drill. Drill music was originated from the UK. So, but people recognize Ghanaian Jew, but not Nigerian rap as much as it should be. So mm. I think it's because the Ghanaians took to their style, we should stick to our style too. Mm -hmm. So I think Rugged Man was probably the first successful rapper, and he did it by sticking to his style. MI2 did it. Black Bones is doing that right now. I think Odumodu 2 is doing that. Mm -hmm. Punchline is here. I wanted to hear that. I was waiting for you to finish and not mention that punchline is coming. Uh, so just before we let you go, uh, just do you have any question? Okay. Before we let you go, I have been waiting for that freestyle. Please. Okay, so I'm sure my viewers are as well. I know some of my old school mates hoping to meet me, living broken, very miserable when I'm 50, so they can laugh hysterically and point their fingers at me. Saying, Junior, read your books or else you end up like him. Because when they were studying for CHM 411, I was in the streets trying to know what's the 411. When they were down cramming that bow 247, I was steady working on my mind 247. When in the hustle for masters, I was trying to master my hustle, chasing my dreams like I was supposed to. To them, I was just an unserious guy who was probably going to make nothing from his frivolous life. But guess what? Three years past, the boy is chilling in the studio with I Brown trying to make this million. While half of those guys are either broke or unemployed, and the other half are jobs that they don't enjoy. See, I'm not trying to laugh at them, I was raised better. My point is, first class don't mean you make cheddar. Whatever opportunity you have, just take it. And somebody please tell Professor Bangbushi that I made it. <laughs> A round of applause, please.